Good morning. My name is David Zhu. My name is Ivani Radia Dixit, and our project is on the automated classification of benign and malignant proliferative breast cancer lesions. Breast cancer is the single most common type of cancer. It not only counts for about 30% of all cancers in women, but it also leads to about 458,000 deaths worldwide per year. The most common pre-invasive breast tumor type is ductal carcinoma in C2, DCIS, constituting 83% of new cases of in C2 breast cancers. Around 50% of these DCIS cases become invasive if untreated, so early detection is crucial. This detection is done through the identification of lesions as benign usual ductal hyperplasia, UDH, or malignant DCIS. Misdiagnosis can lead to either overtreatment or undertreatment of cancer, so accurate diagnosis is crucial to ensure appropriate treatment for patients, reduce diagnosis costs, and save lives. The prior, a promising solution is the development of a robust automated, of a robust automated classifier. Such a solution can improve the tumor diagnosis accuracy, serve as a valuable second opinion, and save lives. The prior work on automated diagnosis has identified morphological features from precursor lesions and applied statistical models on these features. Dong and others extracted features through whole slide image digitization and image segmentation. They then use these features as input to an L1 regularized logistic regression machine learning model. The model differentiated between UDH and DCIS with an 86% accuracy for cross-hospital predictions. While this is a strong performance, there are several limitations of existing studies. First, existing methods often use redundant and irrelevant features in their training data, resulting in overfitting as shown in the rightmost graph. Second, existing methods do not explore other machine learning algorithms or combinations of these algorithms. Third, most do not validate on datasets from different hospitals and hence may not generalize well. We address these limitations in our study to improve the tumor diagnosis accuracy. We do this by first analyzing multiple machine learning algorithms. We created our features dataset to eliminate the redundant features and use only the important active features. We developed our CAFE model, combination of algorithms with active feature extraction. Finally, we validated our model with cross-hospital datasets, ensuring its generalizability. We obtained scanned images of breast biopsies of 167 patients from two different hospitals, the Massachusetts General Hospital and the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center of the Harvard Medical School. From each sample, we extracted 392 features, including morphological features, such as the area and perimeter of the cell nucleus, and statistical features, such as intensity and texture. We applied the six best known machine learning algorithms, which have been used successfully and extensively in many other fields, such as image and speech recognition. These six machine learning algorithms can be broadly classified into three types. The two logistic regression models were the L1 regularized and early stopping models. Only the L1 regularized model was used in prior work in diagnosing breast biopsies. We also implemented two deep learning models, the multilayer perceptron and convolutional neural network, and two decision tree models, the random forest and conditional inference forest. I will go into more detail in the following slides. Both logistic regression models made their predictions by fitting a logistic curve to the features data set while attempting to minimize a loss function. The L1 regularized model incorporates an additional lambda parameter that keeps the feature weight small and prevents overfitting. On the other hand, the early stopping model further splits the training data into a training and validation set. The blue curve in the figure is the error when the model is tested on the training set, while the red curve is the error on the validation set. Training stops when the model begins to overfit, which is signaled by the increase in error on the validation set. The first deep learning model we tried, the multilayer perceptron, consists of three fully connected perceptron layers with an input, a hidden, and an output layer. The convolutional neural network contains the multilayer perceptron, but also includes additional filtering and pooling layers that isolate the most significant features and reduce variation under translation. In practice, both deep learning models tend to perform best on larger data sets and have been shown to be very successful in big data processing problems. 
Both decision tree models consisted of 10,000 decision trees, where each tree makes a prediction on whether a given sample is UDH or DCIS based on the feature values. In the random forest method, each of the trees is given a random subset of the features, while the conditional inference forest splits the trees along nodes based on information measures. After obtaining our six machine learning algorithms, we needed a reliable way of determining the accuracies of our models. We decided to use the area under the receiver operating characteristic curve, or the AUC of the ROC curve for short. This scoring technique allows us to measure the confidence or the accuracy of our model using multiple cutoff points instead of a simple true-false ratio with a single threshold. This gives us a more detailed understanding of our model's performance. We devised two types of AUC scores. The C-score, or cross-validation score, is the AUC obtained when a model is trained and tested on all 167 samples from both hospitals using tenfold cross-validation. On the other hand, the V-score, or validation score, is the AUC obtained when our model is trained on the samples of one hospital and then tested on samples of the other hospital. In general, we expected the V-scores to be lower than the C-scores due to variation between image collection between the two institutions. In our project, we aim to increase the value of the V-score to as close to the C-score as possible while maintaining a high C-score accuracy. This is crucial because the V-score is more representative of our model's generalizability to unknown data sets. Having selected our scoring method, we first obtained the C-score for classification with all features. The L1 regularized logistic regression model achieved a C-score of 0.931, higher than the other widely known models. We then tried various optimization techniques to improve the tumor diagnosis accuracy. Our first innovative optimization technique was the reduction of algorithm variance to make more robust predictions. Second, we extracted active features to reduce overfitting. Third, we combined multiple algorithms to leverage group wisdom. Our first innovative optimization technique was the reduction of algorithm variance. After extensive experimentation, we found that our results varied by up to 10% due to variation in dataset splits for cross-validation. The figure shows an ideal well-shuffled data set in which both lesion categories are represented in each fold. The red is DCIS and the green is UDH. To reduce the variance resulting from different randomized sets, we ran the algorithms 1,000 times on different permutations of the training and testing sets. We then used the median of the prediction scores to prevent outliers from skewing the final prediction. Our scoring method is more reliable and consistent than the scoring methods of prior work. To reduce, to account for the algorithm variance, we obtained, we re-ran re our six machine learning models, and we also recalculated the results of Dong and others. We did this by running their L1 regularized logistic re regression model 1,000 times. The model achieved a C score of 0.931 and a V score of 0.858. We then use these results as baseline numbers for comparison. Our second innovative optimization technique was to use extracted active features. These are features with non-zero weights and are important for diagnosis. We extracted about 30 active features from 392 features, eliminating the redundant features and reducing the noise. For example, minor axis and roundness were selected as important features, while the area and perimeter were not selected. We obtained the C-score for classification with active features and found that almost all the algorithms improved in performance. We then obtained the V-score for the top four performing models. The L1 regularized logistic regression model improved in performance by 4% from 0.858 to 0.897. Our third innovative optimization technique was the combination of multiple algorithms. We combined our two logistic regression algorithms since they had high V-scores. We developed our CAFE model, combination of algorithms with active feature extraction, by taking the average of their prediction. This combination further improved the V-score by 2%, from 0.897 to 0.918. This figure compares our CAFE model, which is shown in blue, to Donga et al's model in red. As can be seen, for the same false positive rate, 
we achieve a higher true positive rate, indicating the robustness and high accuracy of our model. To recap, we began with six existing machine learning algorithms, reduced the algorithm variance, extracted active features, and finally combined the top performing machine learning algorithms to result in our final CAFE model, which had a 6% improvement over previous work. This is especially significant considering that Dong and others already achieved a very impressive AUC of 0.86. Our 92% AUC accuracy, or 6% improvement, translates to a 45% reduction in error, from an error rate of 14% to 8%. With such a high accuracy, we are confident that our model can help pathologists confirm their diagnoses and identify cases that may require additional analysis. This is especially important considering that, um, considering that mammographic screening and other types of sensitive imaging are becoming more prevalent in hospitals worldwide. In summary, we performed the three novel machine learning optimizations of reduction of algorithm variance, extraction of active features, and combination of top performing machine, machine learning algorithms to result in our final CAFE model, which we determined to be more reliable and robust and to generalize well to new data. In the future, we would like to obtain more data from other institutions to further confirm the robustness of our model. We would also like to extend our model to other types of image-based classification problems, such as muscle weakness grade and severity of cardiovascular disease, and other types of cancer tumors as well. We would like to thank our mentors, Dr. Andrew Beck, Dr. Humyun Urshad, and Dr. Sindhu Ganta for all their feedback and support. We would also like to thank our school teachers, Mr. Chris Benner, Ms. Anita Chetty, and the Harker School of Science Department for all of their help. We would also like to thank the George Washington University for hosting this event, as well as the judges and staff of the Siemens Foundation and Discovery Education for giving us the opportunity to share our work. Thank, thank you. you.